What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It's kind of a rainy, drizzly, cold day today, but it's a great day to be in the garden because I haven't seen you all in a couple weeks, so it's good to see you. I was actually on paternity leave, so thank you all so much for your well wishes and also for your concerns on our latest video, or not our latest video, but the video before you knew that I was on paternity leave. Um, a lot of you were commenting like, Luke, is everything okay? Uh, I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. What's going on? Where are you at? Um, <laughs> if, uh, if you're being held hostage, like, uh, you know, uh, send some smoke signals or something. Um, and no, not being held hostage. Uh, yes, everything is fine. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's just been a crazy couple weeks. So thank you so much for giving me that time. Without further ado, I wanted to jump on into today's video, which is something that I don't want to see you doing in the fall when the garden is ready to be kind of put to bed for the winter. And that is tilling your garden. I'll explain why. The first reason is because all these weeds on the surface, we don't have that many. Most of them are dead and we've kind of just uh, been raking them up over the past couple weeks. But all these weeds on the surface, you really don't want to till a lot of them in. Now, if it was something like clover or hairy vetch, we'll talk about cover crops in a later episode. But if it was like cover crops, sure. Cover crops, they are not very, um, they're not very aggressive. They won't regrow that easily. And so if you let them grow and then till them in, they're going to add overall net value to your soil. They're known as a green manure. They're gonna give biomass back to your soil to basically produce compost right where they're growing. And that's awesome. It also feeds microbes, feeds worms, and uh, just kind of overall helps the aeration and structure of your soil, which are great. But you don't wanna till in weeds. And the reason why is because weeds are weeds for a reason. Weeds like purslane, weeds like dandelions, like sow thistle, uh, Canada thistle, um, different weeds like that, um, even uh, things like uh, creeping charlie and whatnot, they can be very, very invasive and they've learned to kind of outsmart nature's systems. They will actually reroot, even if you take them, like there's a lot of purslane here. We've been working with this. We've been having some purslane problems <laughs> for about the past uh, couple months here um, from our compost we used. We didn't, uh, we didn't really check our compost that well and we had some purslane that went to seed and uh, then it spread to this bed here. And purslane, if you break it, it'll just re-sprout. It'll just basically as a cutting, it'll just start growing. It'll also reseed very easily. And so what you don't want to do is you don't want to till that in because it can actually spread seeds throughout your bed. It can also take those little purslane cuttings, if you will, and just strew, you know, strew them throughout your garden. And you really want to keep them isolated, especially if um, weeds are kind of a, a localized issue and not widespread throughout your garden. You don't want them basically being tracked throughout your garden because wherever they touch down soil, uh, they're going to actually start growing. The next reason why you don't want to till in the fall is because of the fact that the water that actually sits in the soil will expand. When water freezes, it expands and it actually creates kind of a fall structure. In the spring, when that water thaws, what happens? All that structure just sandwiches flat. You end up with a totally compacted soil that is very difficult to work and it actually does not really behave very well and ends up really killing a lot of the beneficial soil microbes and bacteria that's found in living soil. And so it's far better to actually, and a lot of farmers are even doing this nowadays, where you just leave your, leave your crops right in the soil, just cut them off at soil level, leave them right in, don't disturb the roots. Um, or don't till, just pull out all your plants, but don't till. And that way the soil structure is, re is retained. And then in the spring, then you till. After the soil has thawed out, then you can aerate. Because then what happens is the soil is not filled with little pockets of ice water that holds that structure up. It actually is somewhat sustained. And then you can work in organic matter and material like that to then build your soil over time, rather than have your soil just completely deflate and make it way harder for you in the spring. All right, and the third and final reason why you don't wanna till your garden in the fall has everything to do with your soil's fertility. This is because when your soil is rich and fertile, it's got high amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and all those amazing nutrients that can grow plants, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna till your soil because you'll actually lose them. Why? Because of a process called leaching. When those nutrients are in the soil, a lot of them are, are actually water soluble. That means they can dissolve in water. And so when you 
uh, fluff your soil up, you actually increase the soil's ability to drain, which is a good thing. That's a good thing, but it can be a bad thing because you're actually increasing your soil's draining ability at a time of year when there's no plants to really benefit from that drainage, right? So what you've done is you simply opened your soil up to breathe, the water from all the snow and the rainfall comes in because fall, winter, and spring are the three months we get the most amount of precipitation. And so all of that precipitation is water that's gonna run through your soil. And inevitably what that's going to do is it's gonna carry with it nutrients. That means it's gonna wash away nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And so all those beneficial nutrients that are in your soil that are intended to grow your plants next year, it's all gonna be washed away or a lot of it's gonna be washed away, leaving you with very depleted soil in the spring. So then what do you have to do? You have to go back, re-fertilize, remineralize, and you have to work twice. Don't work twice. Just keep your soil where it's at. You know, if you have to weed, just do some basic hand weeding or you know, rake the surface of the soil. Do minimal disturbance to the soil because if you, uh, if you fluff the soil structure and you, uh, and you, you really work it, it's gonna look good and you might feel good about yourself, but I'm telling you what I'm promising you, in the spring, you're gonna feel really bad about yourself because you're gonna be working harder, you're gonna be spending more money, you're gonna be spending more time, and you're really honestly gonna be ending up with uh, a lesser quality product in the end. So just leave it. It's far better just to do that because you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be uh, way further ahead come spring. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya. Bye.